Come on, bless the Lord with us. Come on, real simple song. Real simple praise and worship. Come on, sing it with us. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I will serve.
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Come on, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is great. Great is the Lord. The Lord is great. Great is our God. Our Lord is great and he's greatly to be praised. We greet you on this first Sunday in July. This is another opportunity for the network of churches together. I'm Pastor Richard Nelson of the Great Open Door Baptist Church here in the beautiful sanctuary of the Spirit Redeemed Baptist Church where uh, overseer uh, Rabbin Pastor Daniel J. Garrett is the shepherd here. I want to greet all of our churches in a healing prayer circle. Uh, Pastor Winnie Towns, a good shepherd of grace, Bishop Leon Peoples, uh, New Life Deliverance, uh, the one and only Bishop Sharon Garner, uh, Monumental Church, uh, Pastor Cleophis Lee, uh, here on the South Side, Paradise, uh, Reverend James C. Boyd, Pastor, and then, of course, Living Stones, Pastor Neil Red. We're all gathered virtually to eat the Lord's Supper together on this day. And what a good time it is for the Lord says, as often as we do it, we should show forth his suffering and die until he shall come again. It is my pleasure uh, to decrease as the man of God will come and break the bread of life to us. I'll be back and we'll eat the Lord's Supper together. But receive the pastor of this, the Spirit Redeemed Baptist Church, overseer. Daniel J. Garrett. church you know it chapter 12 verses 20 through 28 reading the English Standard Version I do believe (laughs) 
John chapter 12, verses 20 through 28. We are now among those who went up to worship at the feast where some Greeks, uh, there were some Greeks, some, uh, uh, so these came to Philip who was from Bethesda of, of Gal in Galilee and asked him, sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew and Andrew said, and Philip uh, went to see Jesus and told him and verse 23 says, and Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If again serves me, if anyone serves me, he must uh, follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Thus ends the reading of our text. For a few moments that I have to share with you, I'm going to try my best to cut this. No, we'll go over time. I want to talk about four words. Somebody right on the screen, get me to Jesus. Get me to Jesus. Let me pray. Father in heaven, we thank you now for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And thank you for the joy and the peace that you've allowed us to experience this day. Now, God, we've come out of worship this morning to come together this evening, God, for the Lord's Supper. It's my duty and task, God, to stand here and give a word of encouragement and enlightenment for those who are watching and listening. Now, Spirit of the living God, we pray that you fall fresh on us. Make us and mold us to what you would have us to be. Bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more is our prayer. In the priceless, blessed name of Jesus the Christ, we pray, thank God, and amen. Hallelujah. Do me a favor right quick while you're, while you're watching me. Say hello to somebody who's watching with you. I want to thank God for our pastor. And while you say hello to somebody, come on, thank God for our pastor. Thank God for our leader, our shepherd, the Reverend Dr. Richard Nelson. I can't hear you clapping, but I know you're clapping. Matter of fact, make your clap show up on the screen. Use those hand emoji things. Uh, and, and write, thank you, Pastor Nelson, for being a good pastor. It's been um, my task uh, for the last uh, several weeks to make sure that people uh, take care of their pastor. Uh, none of us have ever pastored in a pandemic before. We've been through some ups and some downs and some ins and some outs, uh, but your pastor needs your encouragement. I, I'll take this moment to say it. I'm at Spirit Redeem, and uh, he's the senior pastor, but I do get to say some things. Uh, take care of your preacher. Take care of your pastor. Send him a thank you, her, a thank you, whomever they may be. Make sure that they know you love them. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Somebody holler, get me to Jesus. Uh, it's in this text. It's in this text that we look at today. It's a continuation of an event uh, that most Christians are very familiar with. Martha, uh, the sister of Lazarus, has summoned Jesus, uh, but Jesus got there a little later than Martha expected him to be there. And uh, Lazarus had died. He, he gone. He passed it away. He, he's out of breath. He's wrapped up in the grave, in, in the tomb, and he's there. And Jesus shows up at the last minute, and Martha's a little bit upset. She's a little upset because she called on the name of the Lord, and she expected him to move when she expected him to move. And don't, and, and don't let me be out by myself. Somebody who's watching me right now, you called on the name of the Lord, and you expected him to move when you wanted him to move. But can I tell you what the truth is? He may not come when you want him, but he'll always show up on time. I wish I had somebody in front of me to, to help me push this thing. Listen, you may not, you may call him today, and he may show up next week, next week. But whenever he shows up, he's always on time. He's always He's always on time. So Jesus, Jesus shows up and he, he says uh, 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 to, to, to Lazarus, uh, he calls Lazarus and, and he said, Lazarus comes forth and his grave clothes loose him and Lazarus is alive again. Uh, if you was in my morning service, you understand what I mean, that you shouldn't go backwards. Listen, God is always placing us in a place to go forward. Lazarus died, but then he lived again. It's only a precursor to what Jesus is going to prove in the next few, months, next few chapters. Lazarus died, but Jesus lives again. Jesus lives again. Jesus 
calls Lazarus by his name. He doesn't call just anybody because had Jesus called anybody, anybody would have got up. Oh, help me today. Uh, oh, uh, I love it when the Lord calls my name because when he calls my name, the blessing that he's calling me for is just for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. whenever the Lord calls my name, he, he's calling me just for me. He wants me to have what he has. And what I, what's for me ain't for everybody else. Uh, the songwriter says what God has for me is for me. Uh, and because it's for me, uh, I accept what God has. He says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus comes out of the grave. Now, you understand what's happening. I'm pushing this thing. What's happening now, this gives uh, uh, those Pharisees and those crazy folk a little ammunition now uh, to come after Jesus some more. Uh, it, it aids them in their, in their plot to take him to take him out. Uh, but Jesus does not allow other people to affect his mission. Uh, let me park, park right there. Don't you allow other folk to stop what God has called you to do. Help me today. The next day, the Bible declares, and the word got out that Jesus was coming, and, and they had prepared the way for him uh, to come uh, into this wonderful place. Uh, we, we, uh, the text reads that they went to Philip and, and to try to get them to, to connect with Jesus. These uh, folks said, well, we got to get to him. Let's go to the folks that are connected to him. Y'all, this is the same Philip uh, that the Bible talks about as the deacon. Uh, so they go to Philip. Uh, they go to Philip to get to Jesus and say, you got to help us get to him. It's it's, it's it's like what happens. It's like what happens uh, with that. What's her name? Ta uh, uh, a Tamala man. She sings that song that everybody's praising, dancing to, and singing everywhere. Uh, Take me to the king. Uh, I, I have much to bring. Uh, to understand what's happening is, uh, 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 what happens is, Mary, uh, they're at a festival. Lazarus is alive. They're having a festival. And, and Mary, out of adoration and appreciation for what the Lord has done, takes a precious ointment that she gets out of somewhere like the Himalayas. And she takes this ointment and she blesses the Lord. Now, understand, in the midst of this, the one of Jesus' disciples ain't too happy. I mean, Judas is upset, you understand? Judas is the treasure. He wants the money. And of course, Judas probably wants to do something with it for himself. He says, why are you wasting it? Jesus tells Judas, shut up. Wait a minute. She know what she's doing. She's preparing me for what's coming, what's coming. Now, I'm, I'm moving forward. As a poet, progression, I'm moving forward. Don't, don't worry about me going back. Leave her alone. I need to tell somebody. You need to tell some people, leave you alone. Uh, you're trying. You're trying to do some things in your life. You're trying to start your business. Tell them, leave me alone. Sound like little Daryl. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don't bother me. There's a plan for my plan for my life. There's a plan for my life. There's some. There's some stuff in my life that is already prepared for me. There's there's, there's some stuff already laid out for me. There's some things. Uh, some blessings awaiting me. There's a, there's some checks waiting on me. There's a new living situation waiting on me. There's a new lifestyle awaiting on me. There's a new boo waiting. Y'all, y'all, they, yeah. There's something special uh, waiting for me. Say, they say, take me, take us to the king. Tamla says, truth is, I'm weak. I have no strength to fight, no tears to cry. Not even if I tried, but even though it's been tough, she says, still my soul refuses to die. She says, I believe one touch <laughs> will, will change my life. These men, just like Tamla and Kirk, who wrote the song, by the way, uh, had a desire to experience something life-changing in their lives. Therefore, says... Take me to the king. Uh, brothers and sisters, let me push my way through this. There's somebody home watching me right now who's been saying for a while, take me to the king. He wasn't really trying to get there before the pandemic. But folks started dying. Folks started getting sick around you. Violence started happening. Your check got short. You might have even lost your job. And you're now saying, Take me to the king. This is nothing new for some of us. Some of us uh, are like our pet grandparents and uh, those who came before us. They, we've seen something like this. And so we, 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 we say, take me to king a whole different way. You say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. I wish I had a good church. My hand to thee. No other help I know if thou would withdraw thyself. And whether shall get me to the father, get me to the king. Listen, listen, I'm, I'm done here. But listen here. Uh, there, there are some of us 
who are just like the Gentiles who want to see Jesus. We want to get to Jesus. The Pharisees don't want us there, but the Gentiles who got to Philip say, we want to see Jesus. Uh, there are also people who have contact, contact with us who want to see Jesus, but we can't take them there because we don't know where yet. We can't, can't take them because some of us don't know where he is. We've been faking the funk too long. We've been false flagging too long. We know church jargon, but we don't know no Bible. Help me, Holy Ghost. We know how church go, but we don't have no power. Yeah. Yeah. We, we know how to look in church. We know how to sound in church. We know what time to show up to church. Uh, but we don't necessarily know no book. So you cannot get no get to Jesus when you don't have the book. See, the book is your instruction. The book is your roadmap. The book is your global positioning situation. The book, you have to know the book in order. To, I'm, I'm, I'm raising my voice in order to get to him. You got to know the book. Brothers and sisters, if we're going to get to Jesus, here's, here's three things and I'm out your way. If we're going to get to Jesus, we must help. Uh, <laughs> I want to do some other stuff. But if we're going to get to Jesus, we got to make sure uh, <laughs> that must first be a commitment to truth. Uh, somebody type, tell the truth. There has to be a commitment to truth. What is truth? Truth is the word of God. Jesus himself was sharing the truth with the world. He not only gave them truth through his speaking, but he gave them truth uh, through the example of Lazarus being resurrected from the dead. <laughs> Did you all hear what I said? Uh, this is beyond. This is more truth than they can handle. He had already he spoke the truth to them, and then he made the truth practical. Here it is. Here's a practical moment for you. In order to know the truth, you got to be around the truth. In other words, that means some, some folks around your life that you know are not true, you need to move them out of your way. There needs to be some excommunication. There needs to be an exodus move. There, there needs to be something that you get uh, the liars and the false folks from, from, from around you so that you can live in the truth. Listen, what Jesus says. Jesus says... <laughs> In chapter 8, 31 of John, if you abide in my word, abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Verse 32 says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Uh, freedom comes from having the knowledge of truth. I, I heard this said uh, through my educational uh, life experience. Uh, Knowledge is truth. Truth is power. Knowledge is power. And the more knowledge I have, it seems like the more truth I know. But I come to understand that may not always be true. It depends on who knowledge you believe in. Depending on who knowledge you intake and see. There's some stuff in the history books that don't, don't tell the true knowledge of who I am or where I come from. But there's one book that always tells the truth. It's called the Bible. And so we have to make sure uh, that we're in the truth. Not only must there be, we be committed to the truth, secondly, there must be a commitment to change. Somebody holler, I got to change. Right on the screen, I got to change. There must be a commitment to change. You got to be willing to make a, a forward change. You got to be willing to go beyond where you are. You cannot continue to do the same thing, expect different results. You got to do something different to get something better. I, I, I want more of God, but I, so I got to do more for him and be closer to him. I have to spend more time with him. You have to start talking to him and let him talk. To you, there, there must be a commitment to change. You got to make up your mind that no matter what's happening, I'm going to change. Uh, at our church, when we do our opening, uh, we sing a song that is a, a, I feel a change in my life. Then when the change in your life comes, you don't do the things you used to do. You don't walk the way you used to walk. You don't talk the way you used to talk. You don't sing the way you used to sing. You don't move the way you used to move. You don't act the way you used to. Why? Because there's a change in your life. Oh, what a change has come in my life. Uh, let me give you one more. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we must, we, we used to, uh, we use this whole excuse, to, we use excuses to do everything that we want to do, but God is calling us to look past our excuses and, and receive the change for our life. There has to be a change for life. Not only must there be a change in our life, brothers and sisters, but lastly, there must be a commitment to serve. And I'm done here, Pastor Nelson's coming. Uh, there must be a commitment to serve. Uh, <laughs> there must be a commitment to give of oneself. There must be a commitment not to get caught up in your own stuff, but get caught up in his stuff. There must be a commitment to serve our 
fellow man. God does not uh, God does not change us to sit around. God does not uh, change us to be lazy. God does not change us to go backwards. However, he changes us so that we can go forward and lead somebody else to Jesus Christ. God changes us uh, to serve. Jesus said in Matthew 9 and 37, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. There is a harvest right for the picking right now in our homes. There's a harvest right for the picking right now on our jobs. There's a harvest right Right for the picking right now in our communities. There's a harvest right now for the picking right in the prisons. There's a harvest uh, right now for the picking uh, in the welfare office. There's a harvest right now for the picking on Facebook. There's a harvest right now for the right right now for the on, on, on Instagram. God is calling us uh, to change. God is calling us uh, uh, to serve this present day, this present age. Uh, God is calling us to do something different. That's that, that, that somebody listening to the voice of my, listening to my voice that need to understand that God is calling us to reach out to somebody. Oh, let's go home, Preston. Uh, so I say like Tamala says, uh, take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is broken into pieces uh, and and my and this is my offering. Somebody is saying, get me to the throne uh, and leave me there alone to gaze upon his glory because if I can experience his glory. He can rewrite my story. I'm done now when I tell you that if you let God rise in your life, he'll rewrite your story. Is there anybody here watching me on the screen that wants God to rewrite their story? Can I read the last part of my notes? I believe it's going to help somebody for just helping me in this moment that I can experience his glory. I can be free. If I can experience his glory, I can be changed. If I can experience his glory, I can be healed. If I can experience his glory, I can be delivered. Is there anybody here who want to experience his glory? If I can experience his glory, I can be made whole. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, she experienced his glory and she was made whole. Just like him. Jairus' daughter, she experienced his glory and she was made whole. Just like the woman in the funeral procession experienced his glory and her son was lifted. Tell somebody in your house this evening that God wants you to experience his glory. I'm done now. My notes are done. Pastor Nelson is coming. Our time has run out. But do me one favor. If God has been good to you, if God has brought you through, if God has made a way, do me one favor. Tell somebody I'm experiencing his glory. Say yeah. Oh, yeah. Just now. I know why I'm speaking. I can tell you why. I'm experiencing his glory because the Bible says that they took him from his praying ground. And the Bible says that he was there praying and his boys were asleep. They still took him. Peter jumped up in the wrong time to do the wrong thing. But Jesus steps in and he heals the enemy. And Jesus says, I'm going with him. And by him going with him, he allowed them to whip him all night long. He allowed him to crucify him on a rugged cross. He allowed them to say him stay there in agony. But one thing that they could not do, they could not take his life. He says, into thy hand, I commend my spirit. And he died. Yes, he did.
He died, but that's not the end of the story. On the third day morning, he got up with all power of heaven and earth in his hand. And if you want to know him, then you need to trust what he did at Calvary was for you. He died, and in dying, he buried our sins. But on the third day morning, he got up with all power of heaven and earth in his hand and justified us, freed us forever, saved us from a burning hell. I don't know about you, but if you don't know him in the pardon of sin, if you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, today is your day. This is your hour. This is why it is not happenstance, accident, or just, just poor luck that you stumbled on this uh, presentation. They didn't invite you into the room just so to punish you, but to help you. You've heard the gospel preached, and now it requires that you make a decision. Would you trust our Christ? Would you trust the Savior? Would you be made whole? Would you be made complete? Would you be saved? Uh, he died that we might live, and all you have to do is trust him. If you don't know him in the pardon of sin, this is a good day to know him. The Bible says that if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you would be saved. And so if you've never made him Lord of your life, if you've never confessed, you can do it right now. It's a simple act of obedience. Just simply bow your head and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe you are the Son of God. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. By this confession I accept my own salvation, rich, full, and complete. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. If you've done that, I believe you got saved. And so there are seven churches that you can, eight really with Great Open Door, that you can contact, contact any of us, and we will help you as you begin your new life, uh, the best days of your life, the rest of your life, walking for Jesus. Do it today before it's too late. Amen. And God bless you. Whew. What a good word. Come on, somebody say amen. What a good word. Well, we're here today to honor not only uh, that he died, but that he is coming back again. And so if you would, uh, let me read in your hearing Paul's estimation of this. Uh, taken from Corinthians, the 11th chapter, 1 Corinthians, 11th chapter, beginning at verse 23. Uh, he says, For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of the cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy shall eat and drink damnation to his own self, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when we come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not into condemnation, and the rest I'll set in order when I come. This is the time that we need to search our hearts, search our minds, and search our actions so that we'll eat and drink worthy of the Lord's suffering and dying till it comes. These are carnal elements, but we now expect God to change them to spiritual. And so for that reason, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you now. Uh, for your suffering and your dying for us. 
We thank you, O oh God, that, that even over this past week and over these past days of the month, that we haven't did all that we should have done. We haven't lived so right nor holy. But you've been a good God. You've been a merciful God. You've been a kind God. You've spared us and you've kept us. And for that, we're grateful. We vow now, God, to say that you're right and we're wrong. We agree with you. And so we ask that you would forgive us of our sins and our transgressions and love our souls free. Give us another chance to praise you and to worship you. And we'll honor you with our living. Now, God, as we come to the table, this, this communion tonight, we pray, oh God, that you change these elements from carnal to spiritual. We pray, oh God, that as we take them, that we would truly reflect on the fact that you suffered, you bled, you died for our sins. But then by taking this, we remember not only that you died, but you live again and you're alive forever. We thank you for this meal that heals, this that reminds us and keeps us and, and keeps us focused that you'll come back and get us out of this unfriendly world. Now bless your people as we got dine together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Why he's saying, go get your elements and be prepared so that we can dine together. In reaching, collect the elements to the and prepare high yourself to dine with us.
when he had supped for it, he gave it to them, said, Take ye, drink it all, for I will not drink it again until I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. Let us drink together. The Bible said that after they had dined together, they sung a hymn and they marched out. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on this evening as we commune together. It keeps us connected. It keeps us believing. It keeps us in faith all together believing the same thing. And one of these days, he's coming back just for you and for me. Listen, we bless God for all of you who joined us. Listen, we thank God for the network of churches, a great number of churches. We don't want you to leave. Uh, now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest you in the by henceforth now forever. And church said amen. Amen. Come on, let's church it out here. No, it was the blood for me. Come on, Philip. Sing, son. <laughs> <laughs>